So take a look at this design, this layout right here. You might be thinking to realize this in a browser, you know, front-end development, it might be a little bit tricky to pull this off. Well, low-code tools such as Framer and Webflow make it super, super simple. And so today I'm gonna to show you how to do this in the Node Loco tool Framer, which is based on my upcoming course from Figma to Framer, releasing very shortly, check that out. And you're gonna see just how easy it is to take this layout that was designed by me in Figma and make it a working responsive reality with the CSS grid. The CSS grid is what makes these interesting sort of layouts possible. So let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, everybody, here is the design. You can check the description in YouTube um, to get access to this Figma document so that you can follow along. That will be the best way for you to learn. And before we get started, I kind of wanted to demonstrate or illustrate, you know, how you have to think uh, in terms of rows and columns um, when it comes to structuring like a more unconventional layout like this. So the first thing is we have this question mark in the background and it's kind of like a watermark effect. That can be position absolute. We don't have to worry about that. And what I mean by position absolute is you can place this literally anywhere as long as we in Framer change it to position absolute. Uh, and it's just kind of an afterthought and it just kind of clutters the mess. So we can hide this just so I can demonstrate what I'm talking about a little bit more easily. So we want to figure out when we go into Framer how many rows and columns we need to specify when we create a grid item out of this entire layout right here. And the, the way to do it is like this. So I'm going to show this little, um, and this is just a demonstration of how you figure out where the columns are or how many columns there are. So the first column, if we go from left to right, we can see it's established by this element right here. All right. And we could see we could just place this right here to visualize the column one the next column is established and remember column is just vertical up and down all right rows are horizontal we'll get to the rows in a second though now i'm going to take this replicate it this is another column it fits perfectly in there do not worry about this element right here i'll tell you how that works out in a second uh, because it's serious we hide this it kind of makes this whole process much easier to imagine so we replicate this for the third column and then here's four columns. This is four columns. So when we go to create the grid in Framer, that's what we'll specify. And even though there are empty areas, so we can put empty frames inside of there essentially um, to create this interesting effect. Um, and then additionally, if we bring this back, this is a grid item that will span column two to three and it's very easy to set up in Framer. It's a little bit more difficult, actually a lot more difficult to, to do all this stuff by hand in CSS. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hide all those or just delete them and we'll get back our question mark. And the first thing I like to do is take the um, actual website background and get the fill, which is 101010 for that hex code. We're gonna go into Framer with a new document and I'm gonna paste that in and then we'll go back and then we're going to grab the, the question mark now you have to have the plugin from i and it's the the framer plugin so if i go to if i type in framer and it's called figma to html with framer so if i click that notice down here it says copied one later so go ahead and paste it into framer so it just paste it copies it in your your it keeps it in your uh, clipboard so let's go back all right we'll go ahead and paste that in and let's take the actual uh, frame right here and we are going to add a layout. This is pretty much something you do every time. Um, and start and center to line is fine. And then we're gonna take this element. When you do that, it switches it back to a relative. We wanna go to type and specify absolute. And we also wanna make sure that it's bound to the bottom, not the top. And then that way we can kind of position like, like right there. And then additionally, so that we don't accidentally select it when we're working with the stuff on top of it, we'll go to layers and we'll grab it here and hit control L to lock it. Okay, now we're gonna go back into Figma. And the next thing is, okay, we're, what do we do next? You could take everything and then just, you know, right click and use the copy Figma to HTML framer. I don't wanna do that though, because it gets too messy. 
we have a bunch of repeating elements here. We have cards that are all exactly designed the same. So what I wanna do is just take one of these cards I, and then we'll use the plugin, the framer plugin for that. So I wanna take this element and this element, holding shift, select like both, and then right click and choose Figma to HTML the framer. We're gonna go back, paste that in. And of course it puts this at the bottom of the little emoticon there or the, the avatar, not a big deal, not worried about that. Now what we need to do is, get, is to get this structure properly in, into a component format and that way we can just replicate it a bunch of times and then create the grid. Okay, so now we would need to get this element inside of the actual frame. I'm going to go ahead and rename this here to card and we'll get our ellipse avatar, we'll call that. And we're just going to drag it there. And now it's inside. And if we just drag it up, we'll kind of see it. There we go. And I want to take the frame and give ourselves a little bit of padding on the top. So I'll just put like 150. There we go. All right. Now with this selected, we can go ahead and now right click and create a component out of it. Call it card, hit create. Very simple. Now we want to take the variant. And we want to make sure that overflow is set from hidden to visible. And the reason we do that is because I want to take my keyboard mouse or my keyboard up arrow key and just push it right up here in the center. All right. And with that, now it's showing up in the center here. Now this isn't really structured right if we you know change the width of it. So we have to go back into our component view and make sure things are set up correctly. All right. So the first thing is we don't want the um, the width and the height uh, to be set at fixed. We're just going to do fit and fit. When we do that, we lose all the inherent white space that we had from the Figma design. But that's not a big deal because we could just add it back under padding. So over here, if I drag this close enough, there we go. We select it again and I just do my keyboard up arrow key. Oh, I can't do that while zoomed up. Sorry. <laughs> Use the keyboard up arrow key. Ah, things are kind of uh, being a little bit finicky right now. Typically this works very easily. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's kind of being finicky. One second. Let's type in like 50. That's way too much. 20. 20 is good. Now, of course, that kind of screwed things back up here. So I'm going to change this to absolute. And now I'm going to position that back up and then we'll take this and we're going to gain access to all four corners and the padding top value. That's not working either. Wow. That's kind of interesting. There's something wrong with my uh, system or something like that. Well, whatever. We just need to increase this. I'm going to do it manually by entering it with my keyboard and just get the white space and all that stuff fixed up so that we're back to where we were, but also we want to take our width um, on the text element itself make sure it's not fixed and you could experiment with what happens when you change to these different values like relative, fill, fit content, etc. But I like uh, fill, I think that'll work here very well. Now, if we move this around, we'll see it's now nice and responsive. Okay, great. Now that we have the component ready to rock, what we wanna do now is just, I'm gonna replicate it or duplicate it eight times. Because remember, we have four columns, two rows, four times two is eight. So the uh, one, two, three, four. All right. That should be eight. And I'm just going to temporarily drag this all the way to the bottom. All right. Now what we want to do is take all these cards and we have to add a stack around them or a frame, or in other words, if you're thinking about this in HTML and CSS terminology, uh, it needs to have a parent element that kind of wraps around them. And so to do that, we can right click and choose add stack. That puts us in the layout automatically, but we don't want to stack. By default, we want a grid. So we change it to a grid. Things start looking butt ugly. Don't worry about that. Um, the first thing we'll do is we'll change the frame itself or the stack to fit content. All right, that looks a little better. And then we don't want to give it a fixed width of 277. We want to give that like a fluid width of like 90%. See how we're kind of getting somewhere. Additionally, you'll see the columns and rows right here. They're flipped. We want four columns, but two rows, not 22. Now look at that. We're starting to get somewhere. 
These are cut off, of course, because this element, if I zoom out, is set to hidden. We can do visible. Ah, there we go. So now we can just take like this one, for instance, and we could delete it. Now that screws it up over here. It doesn't take it away over here. It screws it up over there, right? So what we could do is just take the frame tool, hit F, just make a circle, or not a circle. Is that a circle, Gary? No, that is a rectangle or a square. <laughs> Get rid of the fill, and we will literally just drag it, um, or rather in the layer view, drag it here in the first position. There we go, not a big deal. Do the same thing here, delete that one, take the frame, duplicate it over here, and then after the two middle ones, just put it right there on the fourth position. And then finally, we'll take um, this one and this one and delete it. We're gonna take our frame, duplicate it over here in the layers view, and then move it to the middle position between the last two cards. Finally, we take that frame and then we uh, set it so that it spans two columns. Ta-da, uh, that's it, that is it. We're getting there. Next up, we need to put this element here. Oh, and also I will fix this so we get our question mark in view. There we go. Now we're gonna go back to Figma. We're gonna take this element, which is a, um, a frame or a auto layout. We're gonna right click and choose Figma to HTML the Framer. We're gonna go back, paste that in. Now it's outside of our stack, so we need to paste it inside of this frame right here or drag it inside of rather. Okay, might be wondering where the heck did it go? And we can see the gap property is set to 57. So let's remove that. We don't need that either. And then the bottom is set to negative 120, which is why it's not showing up. So let's just hit zero on that. And, oh, okay, that was the gap property. We didn't need to adjust that one. There we go. Now, if we look at the frame itself that it's sitting within, we could take a look and we could figure out, maybe add a layout and that fixes it right there. And you could adjust um, different padding values if you wanna get this like situated in a different way, like the padding up value to kind of center it there. Or if you don't want it centered, you could do a negative or not a negative value, but uh, I think right there is good anyways. Yeah. All right, so I probably will increase that just a bit nice okay so now how does this respond is this good i don't know let's go ahead and hit play and yeah i actually like this this works well yeah very nice but then once we get to a certain point like here it'll stop and it stays fixed but what about phones what about tablets so we need to make this responsive as well and it's a lot easier than you think so what we wanna do is we'll get this to the point at which where we wanted to make an adjustment, probably like right here, right there. And I'll add a breakpoint at tablet. And then I'm gonna go ahead and modify. We'll take the grid element itself and we're gonna modify this so that it is two columns now with four rows. All right, now when we do that, we're gonna to have to delete some of the empty frames or rather right click on the frame itself and we can hide it. All right, do the same thing on this one. All right, so if I go to uh, hide, there we go. And then we could take this element and it depends on where we place this in the stack of uh, where we want it to go. So for instance, if we put it right there, it'll center it between both of these, which I do like. So now what I can do is if we drag this in even further, we can now see it's now starting to work in this type of layout a lot better. Okay. Next up, what about, oh, and by the way, let's demonstrate this. So we're all the way out here and then it changes to this view. Look at that, very nice. I have more white space underneath this element, but no big deal. So then, we have to ask ourselves, at what point should it collapse into just one testimonial per row? Uh, because this will also break. Like I don't like have all those lines like this, this, this thin or so. So right around here, I might add a breakpoint right there. Hit phone. We're gonna take our frame. And now we're gonna say columns one, 
and 5. So now we could just take this I uh, and say fit content and maybe add a little bit of uh, 150 bottom padding. All right. So now let's go ahead and hit play. Here it is. Here's tablet and here is mobile. And look at that. Awesome, awesome stuff. And if you want to really learn more about Framer, what would be really cool is to make this um, scroll based um, animated. Like when you're scrolling down, it can animate the cards in from out from nowhere from a mask. We're going to learn how to do all that really cool stuff in my upcoming from Figma to Framer course. Hopefully, you enjoyed this little preview. If so, definitely check out designcourse.com. Subscribe here, and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.